everyone. Today we're going to utilize a tennis ball to get into deep sore spots in the body. So in this video we're going to focus around the glutes and pelvic area and the posterior side um, and down the hamstrings and calves. Um, so we will target specific muscle groups um, one at a time and we'll learn a little along the way of how they contract in the body. So one prop you will need, I really recommend a tennis ball. This is my mom tennis ball. Do not touch anyone else. So um, this ball is for my own therapy and self-care. So I want to begin um, just laying on the floor is all you need to do. Uh, and we'll utilize the ball here in just a minute. I wanted to show you this real quick. Um, this is a trail guide to the body. It's an amazing anatomy book. And I just want to show you here, I've highlighted some of the more major muscles that we're going to work. Obviously, we will stimulate all areas, but these muscles in particular are the bigger ones. Um, you can see the piriformis, you can see gluteus minimus, maximus, um, and a few others there. So to show you here in the gluteal area what muscles we're going to target and kind of where they sit in the body. I wanted to show you another page here in my book. Just a quick view here. This just shows um, how the muscles work. So in the glutes, we use the hip muscles or around the gluteal muscles for um, hip extension and flexion. So sending your leg forward or sending your leg back. Okay, and then over here on this page, we utilize the gluteal muscles for knee flexion and hip rotation inward and outward. So inward rotation, medial and lateral at the hip. So those gluteal muscles fire in different ways as we move the leg around, okay? So I wanna start in the hip. As you saw in the previous picture here, This piriformis muscle right here, this one right here, is a major contributor to aching hips, aching glutes, uh, soreness in the area. This gluteus maximus, it's cut in the picture, but this is the topmost superficial muscle that lays across the whole cheek and makes the cheek nice and smooth. It's the very top muscle there. So we're going to be working this one inevitably as we go through the rest of them. The piriformis is right along the sacral area here. And then it comes down and inserts along the upper part of the humerus. The gluteus medius is the top of the cheek muscle which creates the rounding at the top of your gluteals. This one uh, contributes to a lot of tightness and pain, and as you can see, it kind of comes down and outward there too, okay? The gluteus minimus is the one that sits, if we're lying on our side, we can get into that one, and we certainly will do that as well. So just an overview there of where we're gonna start. And I'm just gonna go through one side of the body so we're not here forever um, just working on those glutes, okay? So I'll get up on my knees here. Aim the camera a little down so you can see. Whoop, other way. Okay. So here's the glute mead. We're going to start here and work our way out. Okay. The piriformis is right alongside the sacrum. Most people can just feel it aching. Right there is the sacrum, or the sacrum and the piriformis, and we're gonna come out this way, okay? And the glute minimus, we're gonna lay on our side and get into it right about here, okay? And then we'll move forward. And there'll be some subtle movements of the leg as we go just so we can really get in there and target the points of pain. Okay, so go ahead and lay down on the floor. So laying down on a flat surface, um, the floor is best, okay? 
So let's get into the piriformis first. So as I had showed you, the piriformis is right along the sacral area. So we're going to tuck that ball right in there and then roll back over the top of it. Okay, so you can give yourself a moment here to desensitize to pressure. Then lower your, I'm on my left side, so you can lower the right leg to increase pressure. You can lower that left leg to get in there really deep too. Okay. So we're just going to desensitize here. This right leg can be bent. Just kind of feel it out with what good, feels good in your body. You'll find the balance here once you kind of sink into it. I'm bending my right knee so I can keep this left leg straight and I'm going to turn from the hip. So what we're going to do is we're going to move not from pulling our ankle, but we're going to move from turning at the hip and we're going to turn the toes out. So you feel as you turn your hip out, that lateral rotation, you'll feel it squeeze into that piriformis a little bit. Okay. And then we're going to turn back toes to the sky. Let's do it again. Turn. And back in. Okay. Let's bend the left knee. Woo. Put the foot on the floor. Feel how you sink in a little bit deeper. Now we're going to turn out from the hip again. as far out as you can go with it, and then back in. So I'm just giving you basics so we're not here all day. You take time with this until the muscle releases. And it's nice when you have pressure there. Also a good tip. The nervous system resets the muscle and the body figures out what's going on here when you decrease pressure after you've applied pressure. So we're sinking in and it's nice and deep in there now, applying deeper pressure into the piriformis. So after you do a few of these rotations with the hip and stuff, lift up a little bit. Give yourself a second for the muscle to just go ah, and relax and then sink back down right into that same spot. Okay. So we're going to work into glute med. So from the piriformis, where we are here, we're just going to lift up and we're going to put that ball right on the side here. So we're right about here with pressure. Okay? We don't want to be on the bone, we want to be right to the side of the bone there. So we're sinking in here, giving ourselves a moment to desensitize. Okay? Feet on the floor is probably ideal with this one just so you can keep balance. Okay? So let's turn the hip out. Knee bent, and we just turn out. Squeeze into that glute med. Ah, feels nice to just hang there for a little bit, and then we come back. Okay. So we're doing this a few times. It's I do it like two, three times, where I come up and down with my hip uh, rotation. And then I come up, take the pressure off completely, plant your feet, like coming into just a baby bridge here. Let the muscle soften into completely reset, and then we come back in. Check and see if you want to stay there, or if we want to move that ball laterally out a little bit and find the next spot. Okay. External rotation of the hip. Let that leg drop down as far as you can go with it with this glute med and really squeeze into that muscle. Apply the deepest, most consistent pressure you can and then back up. Okay. Couple of these. Feel it out. Hang out here. Give yourself a good hour to work into these glutes and hamstrings here. So we're going to come out a little bit farther and we're going to turn more laterally to get into the glute minimus right here. Okay, So with this one I like to lay on my side. So we're going to turn over, 
and use this other leg here to help support you. You can push into the floor to kind of lift out of pressure if you don't want so much, or you can sink down right into it. So with this one, let's stretch out that leg. See how that feels. So lifting this leg off the floor, just a little bit, and then back down. Try to relax the muscle as much as you can as you contract it and relax it. Lift the leg up a little bit. Good. Now with this one, it's actually abduction that contracts the muscle with this hip, but we clearly can't push into the floor, through the floor. So what we can do is you can ground at the outer edge of your leg and kind of press into the floor a little bit and then relax. Really focusing, targeting on this glute min minimus for contraction. Press the leg down, really squeeze into it and then relax it completely. And when you relax it, try to create soft flow into the muscle. Try not to make it choppy, and you might have to do it a couple times. It just makes it more comfortable for you and more effective. So squeeze and relax. Good. One more time. Squeeze and relax. So as we've worked these muscles, we've got into that glute max too quite a bit. But before you switch sides, Put that ball back underneath and just roll around a bit. We can start back at that piriformis and you can roll diagonally outward towards the hip and you'll feel the ball and socket of your hip bone. See if you can get to the inside edge of that ball and socket and just let the ball roll around the outside edge of the bone. It might be okay to get right on the bone, but it's, I would avoid it, you know? I mean, there's some muscles that run across it and around it, of course, to support, but it might be really super sensitive in there for you. Good. So keeping this leg straight just applies the best consistent downward pressure. And you'll feel as you move around the top of that ball and socket, and more lateral, you'll find a bit of a spot there. You might find some spots more to the inside. So just like hang out, be mindful, breathe and relax. Try to keep those glutes nice and soft. And we want to work here until the muscles let go and you're, you don't feel pain anymore. Okay? So utilize that lifting up, letting the muscle relax. You'll feel it, it'll just go, ah, and it'll totally let go, and then you can sink back down. Explore a little bit, see if you can find any more spots. Take your time, okay? So I'm gonna roll off, and take my ball, and now we'll transition to hamstrings. All right, to work the hamstrings, we need a chair. So the best, I think, is a hard bottom chair, something without a deep cushion on your sit bones, okay? To mention the sit bones, this is where we have the sit bones, okay? So this is the bony nub that we sit on when we say ground at the sit bones, okay? It's called the ischial tuberosity. It's part of the lower portion of the pelvic girdle, okay? These muscles here, we're highlighting here, these are the muscles we're going to focus on in the hamstrings. And as you can see, they all originate near that pelvic bone. And this isn't even all of them. But just to give you uh, an idea here. Wanna... All right. As you can see here, the hamstrings contribute to flexing the knee, laterally rotating a flexed knee. Um, it extends at the hip and it assists in lateral rotation of the hip as well. Okay? It also contributes to tilting the pelvis posteriorly, so that means taking the curve out of your lower back and tucking the tailbone. 
the hamstrings shorten and contract with that movement as well. So here's just a brief, just a quick picture of the hamstrings, some of them. And here's a more detailed view of how to work the hamstrings. So we're going to get right into where that picture is, where the fingers are, right at the origin points of the hamstrings. Okay, so we'll need that ball. So this one um, doesn't require a whole lot of movement. So we're going to just sit in our chair with our feet on the ground to start. Okay, the hamstrings, as you have seen, come right out from the sit bone here. So we're going to tuck the ball right here to start, okay? And we all have pain in here, so as you apply pressure, you will find those spots, okay? So we're going to just line up right in front of that sit bone and sink right into those origin points. So I want you to go slow with this because it can be uh, pretty intense, okay? If you practice yoga, um, these are probably really, really tight, okay? So, one thing you can do is once you give yourself that moment to kind of desensitize, go ahead and slowly start to straighten your leg. So what this is going to do is it's going to stretch the muscle out, but it will also bring it a little bit more to the surface so you can feel it and find it, okay? Now once you really find that spot, I'm going to scooch a little more in, okay? It'll feel like a stretched out rubber band. It'll be kind of stiff and tight and kind of bind up, bound up. We're going to take the leg out and we're going to turn from the hip again, inward and outward. Okay. Now you can try that and you can also try just bending the knee and putting the foot down this creates a contraction in the muscle, shortens it. So here you can shift weight. So it's nice to have hands underneath the chair so you can kind of sit forward a little bit and pull against the bottom of the chair and sink a little bit more pressure into it. And then you can slowly, see how I'm just slowly moving my leg? That's all you're gonna to need to do. Once you find the end of it, you want to just stay as solid and consistent in that spot as you can and just work the tissue until it lets go. So you can try some of that. You can bring the leg back out to straight. And you can bring a bend back into the knee. And again, a couple breaths here, a couple rotations of the hip and a little movement. And then you want to lift up. Give the muscle a second. You'll feel it go relax and let go. Keep the ball in place so you don't lose your spot. And then sink back down into it. Okay. Another thing you can do, this is great. This might be just plenty of pressure for you as we pull our body into the chair. But you also can lean forward. Try that. You can bring an arm to the thigh and push down. Try that. See how that feels. Little movements, little movements. Okay. I, for my adductors, more inner thigh, when you're more closer to the midline, I take a fist here and just place it right inside. I'll show you on the other leg. I place my thigh, my fist right inside this thigh and then push, push straight down into the pressure, into where you're feeling it, and you get a nice bit of pressure there. This is for more um, midline, more adductors. The adductors, which bring the legs together, blend into the hamstrings. So if you press here, you'll feel it, and then you can do some little movements back and forth. You can send the leg out, see how that feels. Rotate at the hip. Just make sure you're coming from the hip with this and you're not pulling your ankle. Okay? Rotate from the hip, back and forth. This gets cross fiber, so we're not running with the tissue, we're running perpendicular to the tissue, which is quite effective when you're really, really tight. So a little bit of rotation there, turn the hip in just as 
far as you can. That is really, really, really intense. And then turn the hip out. Very nice. So that's about it. You can spend another whole entire hour on the hamstrings waiting for them to let go or as much time as you need um, to feel some relief. Okay, so next we're going to get into the calves and we'll be back down on the floor for that one. Okay, moving on to the lower leg on the posterior side. So there are several muscles in the lower leg that contribute to lifting the heels, like in a downward dog as we lift the heels, um, and also inversion uh, at the ankle. So I'll show you a picture here of the main muscles that we're going to focus on. This here shows a cut version over here. You can see the deeper soleus and the cut version of the gastroc and then the full gastroc layered over the soleus on this side. And as you go down, it moves into the tendon. So right in this spot, this is where a lot of us have pain, right here, right where it turns to tendon. And it runs down, all the way down into the calcaneus or heel bone there. So we're gonna be focusing on those areas. And just to show you movement in the body, as we contract the calf, we lift the heels, as you can see here. So it's engaging the soleus and the gastroc, as well as deeper lower leg muscles. But these are the, the big ones that we're gonna focus on, okay? And also, to show you another picture. And as you can see here, in this picture, as well as this one, uh, we have inversion at the ankle. An inversion at the ankle means that, as you can see here with the arrow, the arches are lifted um, and the outer edges of the feet are pressed down. But this is a, an ex accentuated version of higher lifted arches, um, which in a lot of people that do have high arches causes that low leg pain, um, which can also radiate up into the pelvic area. Okay, so we'll get the ball. We're going to sit down on the floor. Okay. So with this one, I typically sit up or um, lean down onto my elbows. Okay. So I will get this side so you can see a little easier. So as you can see, as I flex my calf, aim it. So as I flex my calf, you can see the end of my gastroc right about here. Okay, so we're gonna get right in there and start right in the middle. You saw in that picture the biceps of the gastroc, how there's that line down the center and they meet up right in the center at the tendon part where it starts. Okay. So, this here might be plenty of pressure for you. So let's just start here and point, remember this contracts as we point the toe, and then you pull the toes back and it lengthens out. So we're pointing. So flexion and extension at the ankle. So if you want a little bit more pressure, just simply take your other leg and put it right on top. That adds quite a bit more pressure. And then flexing and pointing. Let me scoot back a little bit so you can see my ankles. So this top leg's just resting, and I'm just pointing and flexing the other side. And go really slow with this, guys, because this can be really, really intense. Go point and flex. So again, a couple of these repetitions, right? We practice, we desensitize, and then I want you to lift up, let the muscles soften and reset, 
and then come back down. And try it again. Okay. So, you can run through any part of the lower leg that you need to. This part is really super sensitive right here when it turns to tendon on a lot of folks. But running up, also starting right at the origin points of those gastrocs, the soleus, right below the knee might be to your benefit too. And I've noticed that it's, see how my leg is wobbly, it's a little harder to balance the ball, so just hold your leg. And just stabilize everything. Point, flex, point, flex. Good. And then run down a little ways and just come right down through the center. Point, flex. Feel if there's any, any trigger points there. You know, you might find something that you didn't know was there, waking you up a little bit. Go down a little ways. It's going to get a little bit more intense as you make it towards that tendony side. We're right in the belly of the muscle here. So, as you run down the middle, once you go past where the tendon starts right here, you can certainly make your way down towards the ankle. So I lean back sometimes, I come down onto my elbows sometimes here, and then you can run down the lower leg all the way. So I just bend the knee, just kind of move a little bit, get your knee involved, you can bend the knee a little bit, or you can move from the hip and just kind of keep the leg straight and run all the way down to the ankle. Again, adding pressure by stacking the legs. Make your way down. And just work in that area. Okay? Flexion, extension, back and forth. Good. Very nice. Taking your time on both sides to you get the results that you're looking for. Highly effective. Um, when you're done working the whole lower body, have a little bit of extra water than you usually do because we pull toxins, release things as we unglue stuck tissue. So just be mindful there to hydrate. So I will create another video uh, here very soon um, on anterior legs and we will work the pelvic area in the front, anterior, down the quads and then into that anterior lower leg. That will be another day. Thank you very much for watching. Namaste.